Hola, me llamo Emily King y estoy hablándote en español. Más de 400 millones de personas hablan esta lengua y la mayoría del mundo puede hablar más de una lengua. Tengo el honor de ser parte de este grupo. He hablado español para casi 10 años. Empecé a aprender español en el primer grado, después de un año de francés. Decidí continuar mis estudios de español porque me encanta la lengua y la cultura. Iba a campamentos de verano de inmersión para aprender más afuera de la escuela. Hacía trabajo voluntario para a un programa de inglés en que yo ayudaba con la enseñanza de inglés a personas que solo hablaban español. Cada año, para la Navidad o el Año Nuevo, yo hago tamales con mi mamá. Es mi día favorito de todo el año. En mi clase de español, he aprendido sobre la historia y la cultura de Sudamérica y España, cosas que nunca hubiera aprendido sin español. He aprendido sobre el ciclo de violencia de pandillas y cómo relaciona a la historia de El Salvador. He aprendido sobre las vidas de Frida Kahlo y Diego Rivera. He aprendido sobre las tradiciones del Año Nuevo en España. He aprendido sobre una gente única y fascinante y nunca quiero perder esta parte de mi vida. Quiero hablar español para mi vida entera. I want to speak Spanish for my entire life. Statistically, 1.5 billion people speak English, about 20% of the world's population. It is our lingua franca, our language of business, travel, and media, meaning that though it may, may not be the most spoken language, it is definitely the most prominent. So if English is so important, impactful, why should you bother learning a second language? What's the point? Well, learning a second language improves your interference suppression ability. Interference suppression essentially means the ability to focus in on one task at a time while blocking out distractions. For example, let's say you're trying to get some work done in a coffee shop. Obviously, people will be having conversations all around you, but you block them out to be able to get the work done. This blocking out of distractions is known as interference suppression. Research has shown that when you are learning two languages, both languages are always active in your brain, meaning that you can't turn one on and turn another off. This occurrence, known as language coactivation, means that bilingual people constantly have to suppress whichever language they're not using. Prolonged exposure to this kind of mental workout results in improved interference suppression, meaning that bilingual people are better and more efficient at multitasking than monolingual people. Second, MRI scans have shown that when you are learning a second language, it actually changes the architecture of your brain. Since there are so many skills required to be proficient in a language, including learning a whole new set of vocabulary and grammar structure, not to mention the more complex aspects of language, like idioms, allusions, and connotations of different words, Learning a language is a true mental workout. Because of this, when you are learning a second language, the brain matter in the areas of your brain that are activated while learning the language actually strengthen and grow along with your understanding of the language. One known benefit of this change in brain architecture is a delay in the onset of dementia in the elderly. Age-related dementia, or difficulties with memory and other thought processes, is caused by a loss in the amount of brain matter. Since bilingualism increases the amount of and strengthens the brain matter in your brain, it can delay the onset of dementia by up to five years. Regardless of when you acquire an understanding of your language, you can still reach the same level of proficiency and reap all of the benefits that I talked about earlier. In his book, Bilingual Life and Reality, Francois Grosjean explains that there are two types of bilinguals, simultaneous and successive. Simultaneous bilinguals learn words to describe concepts in two languages at the same time. This type of bilingual is rare, as it requires constant and equal exposure to two languages since birth. Successive bilinguals, on the other hand, 
use words that they've already learned in one language to learn a second language. This group makes up the majority of the world's bilinguals, as it doesn't matter when you learned your second language to become one, so long as you have already learned one language. However, no research has shown that becoming bilingual one way or the other is better. As long as you have constant exposure to both languages, you will maintain your bilingualism. There is one catch. All too often in my Spanish classes at school, I see students learning just enough of a language to scrape by with a decent grade, rather than actually learning the language in a way that will benefit them. How much you benefit from learning a language depends entirely on how much effort you put into it. If all you ever do is practice memorizing vocab words, then all you'll ever know are random phrases like hola and como estas and the days of the week. <laughs> From personal experience, I can attest that learning a language is a journey. There are ups and downs, times it would seem easier to take shortcuts just to make an A. But if you want to have all the benefits that I talked about earlier, if you truly want to be bilingual, you have to work for it, just like you would for anything else that you wanted to get better at, whether it be fitness, studying, or playing a musical instrument. The difference between practicing to get better at those things and practicing to get better at your second language is that you don't really have to block out time to practice your second language. You can do it anywhere, anytime. Washing the dishes? Try narrating your actions in the language you're learning. Y ahora yo agarro el jabón para lavar del plato. Walking your dog? Try telling it about your day in the language you're learning. Y después yo fui a la cafetería donde vi mi maestro de historia. Él dijo que había sacado una buena nota en mi proyecto. Want to watch a movie or a TV show or listen to music? Do it in your second language. Pretty soon, after constant exposure, you will begin to realize that your second language is, quite simply, becoming a part of your life. I first started to realize this when I began to have a preference over which language I said some words and phrases in. For example, the Spanish phrase for homemaker is ama de casa, which directly translates to love or heart of the house. In this case, I prefer the Spanish version, since heart of the house is a much better way to describe the occupation than homemaker. On the other hand, the Spanish phrase for soulmate is media naranja, which directly translates to half orange. <laughs> In this case, I prefer the English version, as half orange is not the most romantic way to describe your true love. <laughs> Throughout my years of speaking Spanish, I've learned a great deal about why you should learn more than one language. It opens your eyes to new concepts and cultures, new ideas and new people. It teaches you about history you never knew existed and connects you to people you never would have met. But the most important thing that I have learned is that it is never too late to start. My mom, who is over 40 years old and long past the years of traditional education, spends 15 to 20 minutes every day practicing French using an app on her phone. Apps like these that can teach you a second language are everywhere these days. Everything from Duolingo to Memrise to Babbel to Rosetta Stone. And if you keep practicing, you will learn. My mom is able to speak to me in French every day because of that app. You can become bilingual. Puedes hacerlo. Gracias. Thank you.